Welcome to Crazy Nurse RN Hub, where learning becomes a tradition. Come, join me as we explore the multifaceted worlds of nursing. Hi there, students! Welcome back to Crazy Nurse RN Hub, where learning becomes a tradition. As continuation to our lecture, on drugs affecting female reproductive system, we have uterine motility drugs. It stimulates uterine contractions to assist labor, and we call that oxytoxics, or to induce abortion, and we call that one as abortifacients. We also have tocolytics. These are drugs used to slow uterine activity. So, for example, is terbutaline. When we say oxytoxics, it stimulates contraction of the uterus. So, we have examples like methergonovin or your methergine and oxytocin or your pitocin. So, when we say oxytoxic, it mainly stimulates the contraction activity of the uterus. The therapeutic actions and indications of your oxytoxics are First, it directly affects neuroreceptor sites to stimulate contraction of the uterus and it is effective in the gravid uterus and it promotes milk ejection in lactating women. So this oxytoxics is very important for the stimulation of contraction of the uterus as well as for milk ejection in a lactating woman. And also it prevents and treat uterine atony post-delivery. We also have contraindications and cautions. First, if the patient has known allergy to oxytoxics, so we will not administer oxytoxic medications. Also, we have your cephalospelvic disproportion. It is where the baby's head is too large to pass through the mother's pelvis. Also, complete uterine atony. We also have early pregnancy. We will not give oxytoxic for early pregnancy to prevent premature contractions. We also have coronary disease, hypertension, previous, uh, previous cesarean section. We also have hepatic and renal impairment. So these are or these are the conditions that we need to take note to take note because these are contraindicated for patients who will take oxytoxic medications. We also have adverse effects. First, cardiac arrhythmias. Hypertension is also an expected adverse effect. We also have your fetal bradycardia, nausea, vomiting, uterine rupture, pelvic hematoma, Uterine hypertonicity, especially if we have an overdose of oxytoxic administration to patient. So that would, uh, that would stimulate or that would overstimulate the uterus to contract. We also have your severe water intoxication and anaphylactic reaction, especially if the patient is allergic to oxytoxic. We also have your abortifacients. When we say abortifacients, it is used to evacuate uterine contents via intense uterine contractions. These abortifacients are used to induce abortion. For example, your carboprost, dinoprostone, and mifeprestone. So these are the examples of your abortifacients. The therapeutic actions and indications of abortifacients are, I mean is, to stimulate uterine activity, dislodging any implanted tropoblast, and preventing implantation of any fertilized egg. So basically, it is 
a drug for abortion. The contraindications and cautions are, first, is if the patient has known allergies, so we will not give these medications. Active PID or your pelvic inflammatory disease. Acute cardiovascular, hepatic, renal, or pulmonary diseases. Lactation. Scarred uterus and acute vaginitis or inflammation of the vagina or the vaginal canal. So these are the conditions that are contraindicated in giving abortif abortifacients. For the adverse effects, we have headache, paresthesia, hypotension, vomiting, diarrhea. We also have nausea, uterine rupture because it causes a, an intense contraction, so a uterine rupture might be a possible adverse effect for that. Uterine or vaginal pain, chills, diaphoresis, back pain, and of course, fever. So these are the adverse effects of your abortifacients. Okay, now we're done with the drugs affecting the female reproductive system. Now we will proceed to the drugs affecting male reproductive system. First, let's have the drug classifications. First, we have your androgens. Second is we have your anabolic steroids. Third is drugs for treating penile erectile dysfunction. So these are the three main cl drug classifications of the drugs under your male reproductive system. Let's start with the androgens. It is a male sex hormone. It includes testosterone. So your testosterone is produced in the testes and it is responsible for the male characteristics before puberty. When we say androgens, it means that or I mean it is produced in the adrenal glands sustains male characteristics after puberty okay so there is a great difference between testosterone and androgen for your testosterone it is responsible for your male characteristics before the puberty stage when we say androgen it is after the puberty stage so please take note of that we have here examples of your androgens. We have your testosterone, danazol, fluoxymesterone, and methyl testosterone. So it's very, uh, it's very easy to identify the drugs under your and uh, androgens because the word testosterone is being reflected on the drug name. How about the therapeutic actions and indications of androgens? So it is responsible for the growth and development of male sex organs and maintenance of secondary male sex characteristics. It uh, increases protein anabolism and decreases protein catabolism. So these are the therapeutic actions and indications of androgens. Now let's proceed to the contraindications and cautions of giving androgens. First, known allergies. Second, pregnancy. Third, lactation. Then we have presence of prostate and breast cancer. We will not also give androgens if patient has liver dysfunction as well as cardiovascular diseases. For the adverse effects of androgens, first we have your dizziness, headache, sleep disorders, fatigue, patient might experience rash, and also androgenic effects such as acne, deepening of voice, and oily skin. We also have your hypoestrogenic effects. Also we have your polycythemia and nausea and lastly we have your hepatocellular carcinoma 
So these are the adverse effects of your androgens. Now let's proceed to anabolic steroids. Analogous of testosterone that have been developed to produce the tissue building effects of testosterone with less androgenic effects. So examples of your andro anabolic steroids are oxandrolone and oxymethylone. For the therapeutic actions and indications we have here, it promotes body tissue building processes, reverse catabol catabolic or tissue destroying processes, and increase hemoglobin and red blood cell mass. For example, it is indicated for patients who have anemias, cancer, angioedema, weight gain, tissue repair. So these are the conditions that need anabolic steroids. Now let's proceed to the contraindications and cautions of anabolic steroids. First, of course, if the patient has known allergy, Pregnancy, lactation, liver dysfunction, coronary disease, prostate, and breast cancer. So these are the conditions contraindicated in giving anabolic steroids. For the adverse effects, we have excitation, insomnia, virilation, virilization, sorry. It is a male secondary sex characteristics. We also have your hepatitis, liver cell tumors, blood lipid changes, acne, masculinization of females. Since these anabolic steroids is mainly or has a characteristics of male, so if females would take this one, it would actually uh, it would actually make them more masculine. So as you can see, you would notice that the adverse effects of this medication is virilization and masculinization of females. Priampism. So later I'll discuss about priampism. What is priampism? And there is baldness, loss of libido. Okay, so these are the these are the conditions or the adverse effects of anabolic steroids. Next, we have drugs for treating penile erectile dysfunction. First, let's define what is penile erectile dysfunction. It is a condition in which the corpus cavernosum does not fill with blood to allow for penile erection. Results from aging process and in vascular and neuro neurological condition. Examples of drugs for treating penal erectile dysfunctions are prostaglandin alprostadil, sildenafil or, your Vi or Viagra, tadalafil, and verdinafil. Okay. So these are the examples of drugs treating penal erectile dysfunction. For the therapeutic actions and indications it acts locally to relax the vascular smooth muscles and draw and allow sorry and allow filling of the corpus cavernosum so as you can see in the video or sorry in the picture attached to this slide you will see there that the corpus cavernosum fills with blood and if it is and if it is filled with blood it would create a sustained erection okay and that would allow an effective uh, erection for male patients so these are or this is the therapeutic action and indication of your drugs treating penile erectile dysfunction however we have contraindications and caution first is priampism so as what I have mentioned earlier in my slide, the priampism, the priampism is like this. There is a sustained erection. Okay? So it is so if the patient has priampism, so 
that patient would not be eligible or would not take the drugs affecting the penile erectile dysfunction because it is not it is not anymore needed next we have penile implants bleeding disorders we also have your coronary artery disease active peptic ulcer hypotension we will not give this medication for those patients with, se with severe hypertension and severe hepatic and renal disorders. For the adverse effects, we have your headache, abnormal vision, flushing, dyspepsia, urinary tract infection, and rash. So these are the adverse effects of your medication. So, I believe that ends my presentation about the drugs affecting your reproductive system. So, if you have any question, please comment down below or I will be glad to answer all those questions if you have. So, thank you so much and I hope you learned something today.